Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks. Well, today the Kaggle is released. And for those of you who are tuning into this maybe in the future, I'm talking about October 21st. So this is the Monday that I'm releasing the Kaggle competition. You can still look at it if it's past this date because the data will still be there and you'll be able to see what the students have done if we're past even the end of it. It'll be ending on November 11th. This is all in 2019. So this semester, we're going to do natural language processing. Let me take you into the Kaggle and show you what that actually looks like and also review some of the course material that's a little bit ahead of where we're at right now that might be useful for you to come up with your best Kaggle solution. To see all my videos about Kaggle, neural networks, and other AI topics, click the subscribe button and the bell next to it and select all to be notified of every new video. Okay, this semester's Kaggle, you'll find that in part 8.5, and I have a link to it right here, just fall 2019 Kaggle assignment. If you want to look at any of the previous ones, they are here on this ever-growing list. This will take you into a Kaggle in class competition. I just set this up this last week and it is just available today. So this is some sentences, some text, that describe how this natural language processing Kaggle competition is going to work. This is the first time I've done a Kaggle in class natural language processing one. The challenge here a little bit is that natural language processing, we get into that kind of over the weeks that you're working on the Kaggle competition, but you'll have to look ahead a little bit to, to get some of the information that you need. Let's go to the description. We're already on the description and see essentially how this is working. So you will get two sentences in the training data and in the evaluation data, and you need to determine if those two sentences came from the same source. Now, I grabbed these sentences from the internet using a program that I'm using for some natural language processing research that I am doing. Now, first of all, I will say that since this is a natural language processing problem, one of the most challenging things for creating Kaggles for a competition like this is that I can't use my company data in a Kaggle competition like this because I would be in trouble. That would be proprietary company data. So I don't really have a source of data that's not out there somewhere on the internet that you could just go download and, and get the answers to. So I'll tell you where this data is coming from. It's not actually a data set. I am truly going out and collecting it. This is data that was in Wikipedia. I went through Wikipedia and I essentially picked articles. And in each article that I chose, I took two sentences. And if those two sentences are from the same Wikipedia article, then I give it a classification of one. If the two sentences are not from the same Wikipedia article, they are a zero. Now you could solve this and probably get a perfect score just by turning this into a big data problem and downloading all of Wikipedia, all 80 some odd gigabytes of it, and doing a big search. I mean, this, this would take you a while to do. And write a program and find each of my sentence, find which sentences occur in the same Wikipedia article. And you would have basically reverse engineered it at that point and been able to get the correct answer. Now, when you submit your code for the Kaggle, which you're required to do when you submit it, I won't accept answers that do that. If you're just going to mine Wikipedia, it, it makes it no longer, it makes it a big data problem and not a machine learning problem. So that's the only solution type that I'm saying is off the table. These sentences come from the same source in some cases, other times they do not. Let's talk about what some of these will look like. We'll get into the actual CSV file in just a second, but here we have some examples of these. So you'll have columns that'll say sentence one, sentence two. This would be like sentence one and sentence two to the two bullet points. So this first one, I have examples, three examples total of sentences that came from the same source. You would classify these close to a 1.0. Here it says the population density was 18, 181.0 per square mile. Now, this is text data. So you're going to have junk in your text. I didn't try to clean the data too severely. 
but you're going to definitely have extra characters. These are things you will potentially have to deal with. Maybe you'll strip them, maybe you won't. That is completely up to you. Another thing I will say from this data too is I created the program that mines this data. I did not create the data. The data is raw data from the internet. I did my best to filter anything that might be controversial, profane, racist, whatever. You've got that all on the internet. I believe I've filtered all of that from this, but we're dealing with a couple hundred thousand sentences that I've pulled in. So if anything slipped through, uh, let me know and I, um, because I'd be interested in and removing it. But this is common in Kaggle competitions. There are Kaggle competitions where they try to have you detect hate speech and other things like that. And in those, believe me, there is some very colorful language. But I tried to avoid that in here, but no guarantees. It's my disclaimer. But here it talks about the population. Here it is talking about a racial makeup. So that went through my my filter, uh, which it's nothing particularly controversial about this. It's just talking about an area and what the racial makeups are of this area. Well, these two are probably from the same thing because this was talking about population density. This was talking about racial makeup. Now this is tricky is if you look at these two sentences as a human being, they're similar, but they're not. You'll, you'll have to try to extract some features from this that is going to help you tie into these. And we'll see that there are word embeddings. I'll go over those in a, in a moment, give you some indication of where those come from, but there's not a lot of similar words here. So if you use an embedding, population and township might link up relatively closely. If I was engineering features for this myself, I would be very tempted to look for has demographic features. Create a feature like has demographic words, population, density. Yes, definitely. Racial makeup, definitely. So I would engineer features that look for things like that. We'll, we'll talk more about some of the features that I would engineer in class. This one might be a little bit easier. Monument of the Judicial Citadel of Selnero near Corlaire Gosh, I can't even say these words. Uh, this then talks about how the castle got its name. So these are from the same thing. They're describing a monument. Citadel, citadel and castle are actually pretty similar in terms of wording. You might be able to get some, some context there. Now, some of these will be easier. They will have literally exactly the same word in it. I picked some, just randomly picked some challenging ones. We'll look at the CSV file in a moment, but you'll have to do some sort of embedding. You are not going to get this to 100%. Not unless maybe you figure out the data source and do some major, I mean, I'm talking probably tens of gigabytes of, of data you'd have to sift through to really get to the core of how I how I generated this. And by the way, those are different ways that you can go at this. If you can figure out how I created the file, that is also another another approach to this. Now, sentences not from the same source. Meanwhile, Western foods are rich in fat, sugar, etc. According to the United States Census Bureau, total area. So this is where engineering a feature like demographics would be would be useful. Not the same source. The EOIC uh, universities, talking about universities, and then talking about a secretary, an environmental secretary. Not the same thing. Due to financial concerns, so some financial concerns, and then um, in doing so, it formed a networking point for Zine creators. I don't know what that sentence is even about, but I don't think it has much to do with this one. So you can see, as a natural language processing, Kaggle, this is, this is somewhat, so you can see as a natural language processing Kaggle, this is, so you can see as a natural language processing Kaggle, this is somewhat challenging. There's a lot of things going on with these sentences. Now, some sentences are going to be easier to predict than others. They'll have similar words. Other sentences are going to be much more difficult because, and you're simply not going to get 100% on this. The only way that you could possibly get maybe 100% of this would be to use Wikipedia and reverse engineer this because these sentences, like I said earlier, 
came from Wikipedia, and that is the one thing that is forbidden to basically make use of just writing a program that goes through all of Wikipedia and tries to find which articles contain both of these sentences. So that is the one thing that I take off the table. It's always challenging for these kind of competitions to really generate data. That'll provide a, ca a Kaggle competition, but not use public data that's just completely there and available for you. So you could get to this. This would this would turn this into a big data problem. Let's go to the evaluation link. It's using log loss. I give you the formula there. Don't write the formula yourself. Just use the one that's built into scikit-learn. Submission format. The sample file that I gave you has all these IDs and I just guessed 50-50 for each one. So that gives you, I think, a log loss of around 0.6. You want to try to get better log losses than that for this competition. Let's look at the data. So here are the data files. That sample submission, we'll look at that. That's the one that we just looked at. Okay, here's the real one. We saw it on the data page, but you have an ID. So these are the IDs from your test data, and then you'll put in the same source indicator. This is just a way of just splitting the difference. The data are uniformly distributed. So there's the same number of zero classifications as there is ones, it's 50-50. So just as a rough, rough guess, I made everything 0 0.5, and it gives you a certain score for that. Now the test data set, if you download that, now it is zipped because it's a little bit bigger of a file. So this is the test data set. And here you can see all of these sentences. Notice there's no targets because that's what you're going to fill in. So if you look at these two side by side, 12, 157, you don't have to send the sentences back because I've already got those. You just send your guess. And then finally, if we download the training set, also zipped, this will have different IDs than the test because you're not training and testing on the same thing. So the test data is different. The training data, the IDs are very low because it starts at the very, very beginning. So this is what you're, you're actually training on. So basically, if these two sentences came from the same Wikipedia article, then it's one. If they did not, then it's zero. Now, how to actually go about solving this? So there's a couple of Kaggles that you might want to borrow some code from. There is the Kaggle Quora question pairs, Q-U-O-R-A. Yeah, Kaggle Quora question pairs. This is similar, but not exactly the same. You could definitely steal some code from this, and it's fine to borrow code for your assignments. So if we look at this one, this is a Kaggle competition where you're given two sentences, very similar to mine, but they're both questions, and you're supposed to answer if these two questions are asking the same thing. Now, this gets into the same sort of, I don't know, cheating is almost too strong of a word, but it's not allowed, so you have the same restriction on this one. You could just go out to Quora and mine some of these questions there and see if the humans in Quora had tagged these as the same question. In fact, that's where this training data came from. Quora took that off the table, just like I'm taking Wikipedia off the table. You cannot go and mine data out of Quora while this was going on. Quora, however you pronounce the name of that website. So this is, this is a competition that I competed in. It was very interesting. And I was able to get a top 7% in this one, I believe. So this, this is one that is a natural language processing from, from Kaggle. There's another one, I think it's Home Depot Kaggle. Yeah, Home Depot Product Search Relevance. This is another one that had some natural language processing that would be similar to what you're doing for the Kaggle competition that we're going to do in class. Now let me give you just a few hints on how I would start to go about this. And during the weekly class meetings, I will give I'll give a couple of of hints as well on these. But what if you're going to go at this the, the more traditional way, now you could if you want to go totally nuts on this, you could use Bert and Albert, probably Albert 
Uh, if that's even, if there's even reliable code released for that yet, there probably is. But what I would suggest to do is you're going to start to engineer features. I would suggest one of the easiest features that you could engineer would just be to look at these two sentences, probably remove the stop words, and then just count how many of these, how many of these words are the same, the exact same word. So like if the word population occurs on both sides, that would increase to the count. So the count of same, that could be a feature. Another one that I would do is a bunch of Booleans. If you think about the types of article that is in Wikipedia, so you could look for demographic fla uh, flags. So if you see a word that says population on one side and maybe racial makeup on the other side, you could engineer that out as well. Look at embeddings, because embeddings are things that will turn each of these words into a vector. And looking at how close or how far away those vectors are can give you additional information. And the thing that I suggest, this is my absolute biggest hint on this. This is what I did over and over and over again on that core question pairs and just crawled my way from, I think I was initially a top 20% to top 7% is look at the data. So get your neural network, get whatever you're using, predicting, and generate a table very much like this where you've got same source, which is it, and then your prediction. So maybe I had predicted zero on that, or maybe I had predicted 0 0.3. And then what I do is I create another column that is basically the difference between those. That is how far off I am. And then I sort it so that I see the ones where I was just the most off, where literally maybe I had predicted zero and it was really a one. I looked at those. And then I looked at those sentences for inspiration and I essentially engineered out additional features that would help separate those two from each other. So that is my suggestion on that. Let me also go through and show you some of the things from the course that you might want to look at from future class sessions. So we're right here on Kaggle. Transfer learning might be of use to you, but natural language processing, I would suggest looking through this whole one. Unfortunately, we get into it just, but there's not an assignment from this one. We only have assignments up to 10. So I would take a look at this one, word to vec and text classifications. This will be very valuable. Definitely look at that. Spacey, you'll want to look at Spacey. Spacey is very useful for tokenization, and that is breaking a sentence into component words. Embedding layers will be very useful to you. Uh, learning English from scratch, not so much useful for the Kaggle. So I would definitely look at these first four here. And then Q-learning and these others, no. So I would, I would definitely have a look at module 11. Okay, only three weeks until the Kaggle is complete. So good luck and let me know if you have any questions.